Hi, I'm Aaron. This is More Than The Sum, and today we're going to use Tinkercad's code blocks to make one of these gyro keychains. This is a beginner project I developed for working with my students, getting them into 3D printing. It's pretty simple to get started, not a super complex thing, and then it prints in place and it's pretty fun to play with when done. So we'll start by creating a new code blocks project. And the first step is to make all of these parameters or variables that we're going to use in order to be able to tweak our model later. So we do all this front loading by creating those variables, then we're going to go back and we can tweak them later to make changes. And so here we set, say, like the number of rings, how wide we want each ring to be, the total height of the keychain, how much gap between each of the rings, and then uh, there's kind of some specific settings for the first ring, and then how big we want the keychain to be. If you want to look into more detail at these things, I have a written version of this below where you can go and take a look at it step by step. And so here we set it at three rings, um, a height of four, uh, ring width of three, etc. These are kind of the values that I figured out and was able to make work initially. Uh, you're welcome to tweak them if you want. Just know that it might break the keychain a little bit too. And so now we're going to do some calculations. So we are going to take those variables. We're also going to do some calculations with them to make sure we're ready to go for the code on the keychain. This is going to make the code work more efficiently. And so we're going to go and set up these variables and then go back and enter those calculations. So our first calculation here makes a variable called the ring size difference, which is just the ring gap added to the ring width. For the second one, we kind of find the distance for all the rings combined minus the first one. So we take the number of rings minus one and multiply it by that ring size difference we just created. And then we store this as combined rings. And we're gonna use that now to calculate the outer radius by taking those combined rings and adding them to the first ring width and the inner radius. And this is, tells us how wide the radius for the outside of the first ring is. And we need this in order to do our calculations because we're gonna start building the ring from the outside first. We're also gonna set current width to the outer radius and we're gonna set the height of our pegs or cones right there at the end. Which brings us to our first step which is to create the little peg objects that the rings are going to spin on. And so we set the top radius. We we'll use a calculation here for the bottom radius. And we set the height. And then here we can kind of go and see it get made. Make sure everything's good. We're going to move it. And now we're going to add a little cylinder to the bottom of it. And we'll group those together and then we'll rotate them. Just like that. And now we're going to actually add the hole that those pegs will sit in. We have kind of a complicated calculation for the bottom radius, the top radius is pretty simple, and then here for the height of that cone. And then we're going to move it um, kind of a weird distance too, so just so that we have like a tiny little gap between this cone and the previous one, and that gives it room when it's printing to be able to spin. So if we look here, we have that tiny little gap between those two cones, which is going to give the room for the inner ring to spin on the outer one.
Okay, and so now we're gonna start making the keychain. We started with this outer ring first. Now we're changing the value of the current width to kind of shrink it inwards. And we're gonna start by adding holes to that outer ring. We're gonna repeat this twice. Now I made some mistakes here, you'll see when we run the simulation. And so I, I changed the, ro the rotation should have been 90, I'm gonna make it 180 here. And then in the calculation there, I added instead of subtracting. So I fixed those two things. And now it works as expected. So we'll group those together. We're gonna set the rotation value back to zero. And now we have our first ring done. You can see those holes cut in it, which will allow the next ring to spin into it. And so we're gonna add this count loop is gonna be basically all the inner rings. So we're gonna go from two to the number of rings minus one. And we're gonna start by adding that ring we're gonna add the pegs to it, then we're gonna come back and add the holes to it. And so, if you change the parameters and make extra rings, what this will do is, it will make as many rings as it need, anywhere from one to 100. And then we added those pegs onto it, and then we group it together, and you can see there, there's that ring trapped inside the other one. And now we're gonna add those holes to the inside of it. So I'm nesting these calculations together. And now here we're adding the holes to the inside. So we added a copy of the holes. We made sure it was selected to be a hole. We're gonna move it, we're gonna rotate it. And then we group them. And so there's the inner rings done. And now we're gonna do the, or the middle rings, I guess. And now we're gonna do the inner ring. This one only has pegs on the outside. So we repeat twice to add those pegs. We move them, we rotate them. And we group them. And now the keychain's all done. We just gotta remove those cones in the middle. So we'll delete the peg and the hole. And we're gonna raise it up so it's sitting on the top of the plane. And it's all done. You can see I come back here, I can change the number of rings to whatever I want. Now it's gonna make 10 rings instead of three. It doesn't really work as well with 10 rings, but if you wanted to make one with 10, you could. And then we're gonna export it. We're gonna click part. We'll rename it. And this allows us to bring it into the Tinkercad main editor so we start a new document we go down to part collection we'll drag it in so you could add your initials to the middle or something like that so I kind of zoom in onto these guys here by selecting and clicking there um, I'll get them how I want it group it hold the shift key to resize them and then I use the align tool to get them centered once I get in place you just have to resize that main or that center part so that it matches the height of the keychain and then group them together. Now we'll add the key ring. So I'm just gonna get a tube and cut a, kind of a corner out of it with this cube. Align those together, group them together, then align it and group it to the keychain. Oh, and resize it to, to be the same height too. Then it's all done. You can export it um, as an STL and it's ready to 3D print. If you wanted to, you can also just draw a shape here. You could import a shape from Tinkercad if you want to do that. And one thing that you probably want to do is to actually rotate the keychain 90 degrees so that you have the shape rotating on its vertical axis relative to the key ring. That's something I forgot to do in that first example. So nice to rotate them there. All right, and that's it. We export our SDL and we 3D print it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and learned something from it. Let me know if you have any questions. If you want to see the full unedited slowed down recording, um, I've uploaded that as well and you can find the link for that below.